I'm your host, Logan 23. You're joining me for Nightbound Chapter 2 The World of Night. You jerk awake from a sluggish sleep, rolling, head rolling from pain. Ugh, where am I? You're alone on a threadbare couch, a cracked ceiling above you. What the? You look blurry around the small apartment. The room is crammed with old artifacts, dusty books, and strange, gleaming weapons. Are those skulls on the wall? And who the hell needs that many axes? I was gonna say, who, many, who needs that many swords, but head still throbbing, you get up and start to investigate your surroundings. Mm -hmm. What is all this stuff? Skull, flail, old locket, hornet book. Do the book. Run your fingers over the gilded cover, tilting your head to read the inlaid title. Balthar's Infernal Beastery? Flip through the yellowing pages filled with sketches of leering, uncanny creatures. Whoa. Trace a drawing of a woman with a contorted, furious face and bat-like wings. The Manax Banshee. What pissed you off, lady? Ah, we get to explore all three. I wonder how old this is. Reach for the locket, which glows a bright, venomous green and snarls, snapping at your fingers. Ah! Snatching your hand back, you take a large step away from the logan. How did... Did that thing just... Growling softly, the logan settles back into its place on the shelf. Skull flail. Wow. You run your fingers over the wickedly sharp spikes. Who keeps something like this in their living room? You pull your hand back and realize that your fingertips are stained a, a dusty brownish red. Just rust, Vixen. Just a lot of rust. I hope. You hear a creak behind you, panicked. You grab hold of the nearest object and whirl around, raising your makeshift weapon to face the man who saved your life earlier that night. Look who's away. Evan, uh, Fun, touching all my stuff. I... what? Still a little out of sorts, huh? Not surprising. Need something to take the edge off? Or are you set on cracking my skull with the curtain rod? I... You look down at your hands to discover that you are in fact gripping a cracked plastic curtain rod. Shut up. Drop the curtain rod on the floor, the man gives you a crooked half-smile. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. I was really quaking in my boots for a second there. Enough with the wise cracks. Who the hell are you? What is all this? I'm Nick Ryder, and this is a hell of a way for you to thank me for saving your life. Nick, you're... you're right, thank you. I'm sorry, it's just... I'm really scared. I, I don't know where my friends are, and I have no idea what's happening to me. I get it. You've had one hell of a night. And frankly, I'm pretty used to people and non-people trying to bash my brains in, so no big deal. Still, thank you. That thing back in the alley would have killed me. I, I owe you big time. Nick rubs the back of his neck, looking uncomfortable. No need to go overboard, okay? Just doing my job. You're... what? Nick brushes past you and thumps down on the couch, patting the space next to him. Come on, take a load off and I'll tell you what I know. Cautiously, you sit down next to him, keeping a safe distance between you. Okay, Spill, who the hell are you? Like I said last night, I'm your bodyguard. But I don't have a bodyguard. You do now, Cupcake. How about you stick with Vixen? Well, Vixen, somebody offered me six figures to keep you safe, and I take my duties very seriously. Well, I take that cash seriously, anyway. Six figures? 
Who the hell knew I needed protecting? A lot of people knew I was coming to New Orleans, but getting attacked in an alley was not on the itinerary. You tell me. This is all I got. He pulls out a folded, crumpled piece of paper from his back pocket. A note. That's it. Well, there was also a fat stack of cash. Along with a photo of you, a date, a location, and tonight at the touristy unicorn. So I spent most of the week asking around, trying to suss out who might have seen him. And? And zilch, nada. No one in this town has ever heard of you. So I went to the bar, and, well, you know the rest. Screechy monster, arrows go boom, I save your life. But how could they know I would be there? They didn't even know I would be there. Nick gives an exaggerated shrug, scowling, and you snatch the note from him and unfold it. It reads simply, protect her. I, I don't understand. But as you focus on the words, a ruthless flood of memories comes rushing back, overwhelming you. The dark alley behind Rougarou. The shrieking, grotesque creature stalking you with its dead eyes. <coughs> Christine on the ground, eye, wide-eyed and convulsing. Oh god, Christine. Shuddering, you wrap your arms around yourself. Nick squeezes your shoulder with a strong hand, his brow creasing. You okay? No, not even a little, Nick. What was that thing? One of the meanest damn monsters I've ever seen. Two holy light arrows barely dented it. Might as well have gone after it with a slingshot. It would have been more cost effective, too. Holy light arrows aren't cheap. And my friend Christine, is she okay? The brunette? She's in the hospital. Comatose. She's lucky that thing only grazed her. I need to go see her. I need to... Nick stops you before you can get up, pressing you gently back. Or butt firmly back into the couch. You can. Why the hell not? Firstly, because if something's trying to kill you, that's the first place it'll look. And second, the hospital isn't allowing any visitors yet. I had a hell of a time getting them to admit she was there. Sag against the back of your couch, tears welling in your eyes. I can't believe it. I'm the one who wanted to come here for my birthday. She she just wanted to have fun. Girls just wanna have fun. Your stomach twists as you remember that you and Christine weren't alone. What about Vera? Our friend Vera was there, too. She she threw a bear bottle at the creature. She was trying to protect me. Is she, is she all right? Who? I didn't see anyone else besides the dead bouncer, I mean. Overwhelmed, you cover your face with your hands. Look, I know it's a lot, but you're safe now, okay? Can you just start from the beginning, please? How is any of this possible? Next stand, stretching his arms above his head, you catch a glimpse of... Hot has beneath his shirt and a web of old scars along his side. Right, we're both gonna need a drink. He disappears into the kitchen, returning with two glasses and a bottle of tequila. You squint at the murky liquid. Is that a dead snake in there? Oh, tequila? Yeah. Hell yeah, we don't drink tequila for babies around her. Right, of course you don't. Eh, why not? Nick pours out two shots and hands one over. Cheers to stuff you never wanted to know. He raises a glass to his and reluctantly knocks the shot back, eyes watering as the tequila sears down your throat. It's sure something. So from the beginning, what's happening? Nick downs his tequila and then stares into space for a long minute, looking pensive. All right, Vixen. The simple version is that there's two worlds out there. There's the world of the day, the safe, cozy place where everything makes sense. Most people live other lives in that world. He sets down his glass and his face darkening. And then there's the world of the night. I'm guessing that's the one less on the safe and cozy side. Right, in one. That world is full of tears, things that go bump and then grow teeth and out of the goddamn eyeballs. 
Do you mean that literally? Look, I'm not saying there aren't beautiful things living in the shadows too. They're always there. All kinds of supernatural beings live in my world, hidden from human sight by magic. And you're not going to meet a bunch of them, my band. Because this is your world now too, Vixen, whether you like it or not. Close your eyes, taking three slow, calming breaths. Done some yoga, have you? Okay, wait. Does this mean everything's real? What? What do you mean by everything? What about... Unicorns? F*** off with that bullshit. Werewolves, vampires. Let's go with vampire. Oh yeah. There's a few kicking around in New Orleans. Seriously? Don't get too excited. Vampires are more of an East Coast thing. Bunch of stuck-up pricks, if you ask me. The ones we get around here, let's just say they're not cream of the crop. You have Nick, a speculative look, narrowing your eyes at him. So, what about you, then? How do you fit into this shadow world? Are you some kind of creature, too? Yeah, I wish. Nothing magical about me, just your average red-blooded American male who's been hanging around monsters a little too long. What does that even mean? It means I'm a night hunter. Somewhere between a bounty hunter and a private eye with a dash of hired muscle. Basically, if you've got a monster problem and you're willing to pay, I'm your guy. Right now, someone's willing to pay me a lot to look after you. Look, I appreciate everything you've done for me so far, but... Hey, it's a free country. You want to take your chances on your own, that's up to you. But that thing's still out there and it's out for your blood. I figure you'll make it an hour, maybe two. You let out a frustrated sigh. Fine. I guess I could use protection. The thing nearly annihilated me and there was nothing I could do. I guess it's probably best if I stick with you for now. Just for a little while though, until we can figure out why that thing is after me. Works for me. Step one, we find out what the creature is. Once you learn a thing's name, you know, it can learn its weakness. Oh, is it a demon, apparently? But you might want to change into something a little sturdier. You look down at your clothes, still splattered with blood. I don't suppose you happen to grab my suitcase? Sorry, I was a little too busy, you know, saving your life. Nick gets up and walks over to the coat closet. An old friend left uh, behind some of her night hunter gear a while back. Bet it fits you pretty well. Hmm, I guess I'll try it out. That's night hunter gear. No. I guess this will have to do. You rejoin Nick. Sticking with the civvies then. I'm not part of your world. Not really. Dressing like I am won't help. Whatever you say. I'm ready to head out. As I'll ever be. You follow Nick down a creaky staircase, hearing a growing hubbub as you near street level. Where you emerge into a raucous, low lit bar. Welcome to the graveyard shift. Best damn bar in town. The owner's a friend, the last upstairs tenant, abruptly vacated the premises, so he let me move in for cheap. You look over the bar where the slim, handsome bartender is having a lively conversation with a burly man and a young woman dressed in black. As you focus on the trio, the air around their faces seems to flicker and swim, revealing... Oh, you're a lovely gentleman. Okay, vampire. They're not human. Wait, you can see them? Through the glamour? The, the what? The glamour, it's a spell, like a magical photoshop makes these folks look human when regular humans look at them. If you can see through it, that's interesting. You're sure you're a human, like a 100% sure? What else would I be? I'm a normal girl from a tiny suburb in Wyoming. And nothing weird has ever happened to you. Nothing you can't explain. I mean, I did have this weird dream back in the cab. I was in the graveyard being chased by the monster, and... 
and there was this voice that was telling me how to escape. Nick rubs the back of his neck, shaking his head in confusion. Well, well, curiouser and curiouser. I guess we'll have to keep digging. Nick leads you to the bar, greeting the bartender with a mock salute. How's it hanging, Garrus? Nick, my mortal. My man, Garrus. That's my man. Oh, close enough. Don't fuss him. Who's this fresh blood you've brought us? Simply scrumptious, whoever she is. Uh, thanks? This is Vixen. She's with me, so keep an eye on her, will you? I need to make a few calls. Oh, and a fun fact, she can see your true face. Has no idea how. Be right back. She can what? Nick walks to the other side of the bar and hunkers down in a corner booth. Garrus leans the bar over crossed arms, grinning raggishly at you. Lovely to meet you. And I may introduce you to my companions, the Stone Troll Crom, brooding and tender of heart. I'm not brooding. You are, and this is Ivy, undead human, a lady of sterling intellect. Ivy rolls her glowing red eyes, good naturedly at Garrus's teasing. Don't mind our host. He's just extra, even for one of the Fae. I'm 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 kind of surprised you're undead. And talking. It's kind of like the TV show from Sci-Fi. Indeed. And what about you, fresh blood? Cat got your tongue. Sorry, it's just a lot to take in. Yesterday, I had no idea people like you even existed. Well, we're not as scary as we look, honest. He speaks the truth. Beneath Crom's craggy exterior lies a big, snuggly teddy bear. With open books, love. What do you want to know? I want to know about the undead ivy. You look over at Ivy, who smiles at you, her eyes glowing like embers. So, you're, uh, a zombie? Like, don't take this the wrong way, but should I be concerned about defending my brains? You don't have any. Ivy bursts out laughing, snorting a little. Common misconception. In fact, garden variety zombies have no preference for brain matter over any human flesh. I'm feeling distinctively unreassured over here. But since I'm not a garden variety zombie, you have nothing to worry about. Cross my little black heart. So, what's it like? The whole undead thing. I like to think of myself as mostly dead. Noted. Anyway, you seem pretty a bit upbeat for a mostly dead person. Oh, I am. It's basically everything I ever wanted. Cool glowing eyes, extremely diverse social circle, and best of all, I get to look this good until the end of time. You know, unless someone chops off my head or whatever. Uh, yeah, sounds great. Oh, we get to know all three, okay. Turn to Garrus, who gives you a lazy wink. So, you're, uh, Faye? I prefer fair folk myself. I'm also a passable dancer and a dreadful musician and an excellent mixologist, if I do say so myself. Speaking of you, seem to like a could use a drink, my mortal. On the house, of course. A drink? Yes, please. I'd love one. Even though you just had a shot of tequila. The flourish, Scarce, sets a frothy, swirling cocktail in front of you. An eventide embrosiery to cure your woes. Hmm, it's pretty. You pick the chilled glass up and take a sweet, cold sip. Ooh. A giddy sense of euphoria rushes through your blood, warming your belly and giving you goosebumps. That is amazing, Garrus. What's in it? It's an old fey recipe, passed down through the generations. So, Nick told me there was a, a lot of non-humans in New Orleans? Oh, yes. Of course, 
There are good creatures, or there are good creatures all over the world. The vampire glitterare of New York, the werewolf dynasties of Texas. But this city is unlike any other. The Crescent City is where all the misfits go, the outcasts and exiles and fugitives. And what about you? Where did you run from? I hailed from the Fey Realm, as do all the Fey who walk in this world. My kind of a hidden colony here, tucked away safe from mortal lies. Here trails off an almost wistful look in his eyes. Mm, okay, Krom, what are you? Krom catches your eye and gives you a small smile when he speaks, his voice is deep yet somehow timid and shy. How are you holding up? I know all this, uh, be pretty overwhelming. I'm hanging in there. Thank you. Uh, so, you're a... Stone Troll, it's, um, one of the lesser known varieties. That would explain it, though you're definitely not what I expect. What do you mean? I thought trolls were... Poofy hair with rhinestone in the belly buttons? Oh god, we're doing it. I swear, those dolls did more damage on our reputation than six centuries of Norwegian troll hunters. Sorry, I guess you hear that joke a lot, huh? At least you didn't say tiny and naked. So, what do trolls do? In Krom's case, work on his pretentious novel, drink too much Chardonnay, and get all melancholy thinking about his ex-boyfriend. Hey! I tease, darling. You're an absolute delight, and your novel is... a uh, novel. That's... fair. Nick wanders back over to the bar, a dark look on his face. Well, any luck? I could definitely use some good news. Checked in with a few contacts, tried to call in some favors, no joy. But I drew up a little sketch of our mystery beast. Maybe our peerless creatureologist could take a look-see? Nick holds up a piece of paper to Ivy, who gives him a flat look. Those puppy dog eyes will get you nowhere, buddy. You know I don't work for free. Any more than you do. Ivy. Nope. Payment first. Consult after. You know what I need. This is extortion. This is capitalism, baby. Nick sighs heavily, running both hands through his hair. Okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll get right on then. Fingers crossed for a quiet one this time. A quiet one? What does that mean? Hunting down Ivy's payment can get a little airy sometimes. Would it help if I went with you? Not that I know anything about anything you do, but I want to help. No. Nah. No way. It's too dangerous. I'm getting paid to protect you and not put you in danger. I can handle myself. You literally don't know anything. I know that you're supposed to protect me, not abandon me in some random bar. I'll have you know, this is an extremely nice random bar. Nick gives you a long, searching look for a moment. He looks almost sad, and then the expression is gone. Been a long time since I had someone watching my back out there. It's useful, especially for a job like this. Going with Nick will give you a chance to explore a haunted graveyard and get closer to Nick. I kind of want to know what they're hunting. But at the same time, I'm going to go with probably a ghoul. Maybe. On second thought, maybe I'm safer here. No problem. Why don't you go back on upstairs, catch a little more shut-eye? Nick leaves and you slide off the bar stool and say goodbye to Garrus, Crom, and Ivy. I'll see you soon, I hope. Take care of yourself, Vixen. Bye! Upstairs, you let yourself into Nick's apartment, already exhausted. Ugh. Flopping back on the couch, you fall into an uneasy sleep. Sometime later, you jerk awake to Nick, shaking your shoulder. He's holding a 
glass that seeps tiny wisps of black vapor. What? Rise and shine, it's time to go to hook Miss Ivy up with her payment. As you get up, you notice that Nick's lips are bluish, his teeth chattering slightly. Hey, are you okay? What happened out there? Things got a little more up close and personal than I liked. Uh, left me with some side effects. It'll pass. Let's head out. Okay, now I really wanted to know. Now see, Pixelberry, now you're making me an incurative. Follow Nick to a nondescript house at the edge of town. Inside is a huge private library, stacked with beautifully organized tomes. It's like a bookworm's dream. What is this place? Ivy emerges from behind one of the shelves, carrying a massive stack of books. Greetings, mortals. Welcome to Chess Ivy. She sets the books down on a nearby table and looks at Nick pointedly. You bring it? Yep. One restless spirit bottled up, but uh, for your convenience. He tosses a flask to Ivy, who unscrews the top and tips it into her mouth, downing the swirling black mist in one gulp. Whoa. Mmm. That was a lively one. You just ate it a ghost. That's... I'm... I don't... I, I'm actually fascinated. How do they taste. Never really thought about it, but valid question. Sort of an airy, cold, tormented, like a meringe with issues. Reaching into his pocket, Nick pulls out the sketch of the creature and hands it to Ivy. Ooh, you weren't kidding. This little lovely is severely hideous. Let me take a look. Turning to the shelves, Ivy runs her fingers over the gilded spines, occasionally pulling books down to leaf through them. Maybe... no. Eyes are wrong for a ghoul, too scrawny, to be a bone troll. Could be a lich gone wrong, I suppose, but... Uh, damn, this one's tricky. I'm gonna have to go look in the cellar. Need any help? You're sweet, but there are some, uh, things in the cellar that don't act uh, take too kindly to strangers. What kind of things? Dit things. Anyway, feel free to look around back at a Jeff. Ivy bustles off, leaving you and Nick among the towering bookshelves. Nick slaps you on the back and heads for a case of antique weapons. Why are you slapping people, man? Careful what you stick your hat and nose in. I'd bet at least half the books in here are cursed. Great. Awesome. Sighing, you look around the vaulted room, your eyes falling on a thick, leather-bound tome sitting on a nearby table. This looks harmless enough. You brush off the cracked leather cover, flipping it open to find the first yellowed page. From the vertible and staunch accounts of Sir Nathaniel Rourke, Rourke, oh god, valiant hunter of beasts, most eldritch and arcane, November 28th, 1645, I had been sailing for a fortnight on its trail before I finally encountered my loathsome quarry. The seas were roiling, the skies curdling gray, and storm racked above me. No. This is really one of Rourke's ancestors hunting that thing from Endless Summer? Okay. As you read on, you can almost feel the rain pouring down on you and smell the salt in the air. Feel the boat creak underfoot. When my vessel listed starboard, I thought it was from a gust of wind, but then a glistening tentacle wide around as oak came questing upon the deck. Holy crap, is this guy serious? If you keep reading, you'll have a chance to step into the boots of a 17th century monster hunter and battle a kraken. Not just... Come on, Pixelberry, not just any, like, monster hunter. Rourke. An ancestor of Rourke. We're doing this. We're fucking doing this. The technical withdraw, slithering back into the riny water as you spring your feet, waving for your manservant to take the helm. Quickly, Bosworth, the hour of glory is nigh upon us. 
Salt spray mingled with a relentless lash of rain whips against your cheeks as you dash towards the railing. Scourge of the seas, mine own white whale, show your foul visage once more, you dare, and oh, I hope you dare. For long moments, the sea churns only of its own volition, frothing and foaming like a horse's lather. You see nothing stirring beneath the angry spoon. Then, with a tremendous roar like a hundred thousand death kneels ringing as one, the gargantuan squid breaks the surface. <laughs> It lifts a massive tentacle, crusty barnacles clinging to its suckers, ready to strike. <clears throat> I shall brace for impact. Drop to one knee, teeth clenched, bracing for the monster's blow. It brings its mighty tentacle down onto the deck, showering you with slime and splinters of shattered wood. <clears throat> Your vessel heaves upon the colossal impact, listing madly to and fro, but you hold fast. Above, the monster rears up, fixing you in its gleaming, beady gaze. It windmills its flailing arms, beating them upon the angry water. Okay, I'm tired of you roaring. Unpowed by its fury, you blink away the sting of the sea and rain and stagger to your feet. You would lay tentacle upon my ship, marine abomination. I will show you what it is to stand against a hunter of the night. Teeth bared, you reach for the belt around your waist and withdraw your trusty cutlass from its sheath, steel singing against leather. You will come to know my blade's keen voice, beast. You will learn to fear it. Rumbling, the kraken surges forward and tangles its limbs around your vessel. The deck quakes and bucks beneath your feet. Oh, fine, Cthulhu. <laughs> its grotesque head looms over the over closer, blotting out the lightning riven sky. So near you can see yourself reflected in its glassy, foursome orbs of eyes. Have out you foul beast! Slash at its eye, aim for its heart. Hmm. I'm gonna go for aim for its heart. Bellowing a war cry, you charge forward, swinging your blade. The Britannia! The Kraken narrows its eyes, catching a whiff of peril as you heft your blade. <coughs> and plunge it low beneath the parrot like beak between the slabs of carapace that shield its chest. Ah! <coughs> As it bellows in agony, the cutlass buried deep within its gelatinous flesh. You saw the blade from the side, the side hack at both its hearts. Oh, the Kraken has two hearts? Writhing and shrieking, a diminished whistle of a scream, the last of its life drained slowly from its eyes. Finally, its tentacles fall limp, releasing their stranglehold as it sinks silently beneath the bucking waves. Straight to hell with you, slavering menace. May you sink to Hades like a stone. You flip the journal closed, your heart still juddering with adrenaline. When you lick your dry lips, they taste a little like salt. That, that was intense. It almost felt like... Shaking your head, you set the book down on the table. A metal door clangs shut nearby, and a moment later, Ivy pops out from behind a shelf. Jackpot, I think I found your homicidal friend. Nick hurries over to Ivy as she heaves an iron banded tome into the reading table and flips it open. I think, oh yeah, kind of like, oh no, oh no. Did you find it? I did, and unfortunately this is bad, buds, real bad. Spell Ivy, what are we dealing with? A blood wraith. What? No freaking way, I thought they were extinct! No, just incredibly rare. It's actually kind of a miracle that you've run into one. I wish I'd been there to see it. 
How big were the claws? Like your blood wraith can tear through solid steel like... Ivy, focus. Right, right. A blood wreath is a summon familiar. It can only be made by a, a seriously advanced necromancer from the bones of a, of a persecuted witch. That sounds distinctively unpleasant. To say the least, a blood wraith is the supernatural world's perfect assassin. Completely single-minded and also completely ruthless. A relentless killing machine that will stop at nothing until it's claimed its target. Possibly the deadliest creature in the book. And that's saying something around her. Great, so how do I escape it? Ivy closes, slowly closes the book and meets your eyes. You can't. Either you kill it or it kills you. Why is a blood wraith after you and how will you stop it? Keep playing to find out. Oh, joy. I'm kind of intrigued. Without further ado, for you on YouTube, thank you. Hope you did enjoy. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down the description below, links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. And uh, yeah, you should come over to Twitch. We uh, we do this shit live. We have a lot of fun. I'll uh, catch you all in the next video. Bye!